In the near future, I want to repaint my grandma's General Electric refrigerator from the 1950s, but it's a cherished heirloom and I don't want to make any mistakes on it. So today we're going to take this nasty upright deep freeze, take the door off and re learn to repaint it today. So grab your sander and join me today as we learn to paint and refurbish a refrigerator door. And this will work on any washer or dryer that you have since we're going to use the same kind of paint so that you can turn your refrigerator from this into this. Oh wait, that's not even the right refrigerator. From this into this. First, I want to remove the door so I can work on the piece on a flat surface. I have to remove the top hinge from the door and then take this to my studio. Your refrigerator could vary from this one, but on this one, three screws. From here, I'm going to go ahead and take the door and lay the door on two saw horses so I can work around the piece as needed as you see here, and your situation could vary from mine. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty of, well, sandpaper. What grit sandpaper should you use on something like this to deal with things? And the answer is a lot like my underwear, it depends. You actually wanna use a mixture of different grits depending on the situation that you have. Generally, you wanna start out with a very rough grit, especially if the top of this has a lot of rust and there's a lot of pitting or other damage. You wanna make everything as even as possible. So if the metal is really pitted and rusty, you may wanna go as low as a 60 grain, uh, maybe even a 40 or a 50 if it's really bad. The better or smoother the initial paint is, the easier time you're going to have and the higher grit you want to use. In this case, I think I am going to start off with a 60 grit, then we'll end up moving to something a little bit higher, about a 150. I wish I had something a little bit uh, less coarse than a 60, more like an 80 to go to the 150, and then we're gonna finish off with the 220. But unfortunately, it seems like in the world of YouTube, I didn't have any higher grit sandpaper to use, but again, Three passes is what we're going to try on this and evaluate after each single time. So let's see how this grit is going to go. Before you begin to work on your piece, you want to remove any gunk or junk that's on the door, such as stickers, tags, or anything like that. In the case of this refrigerator, it has some sort of gunk on one of the corners of the door. To remove this, I'm going to use Goo Gone to soak the piece and then scrape it off with a putty knife. Scratches don't matter because I'm going to sand and repaint the piece. Depending on your situation, if there's a lot of oil or grease on the door, you could use a degreaser before you begin to sand. However, I did not need to do it on this piece. Make sure not to use soap or water because it can make a nightmare of mess interacting with the paint and or rust. Again, use a qualified degreaser. Next, I'm going to use a Harbor Freight Orbital Sander slash polisher with Bauer sanding pads. I used this one to actually sand some of my hardwood floors and it works great. However, the lack of a dust catch is a problem, and I would suggest if you're going to go out and buy one to do this, get one with a dust catcher. Either way, I suggest an orbital sander. When it operates, it uses a varied pattern when making the sanding more even than if done by hand, and you can see when I run this on the camera, it has that random pattern, which is really nice and makes it easier to get a quality finish. Now it's time to go to work. You want to start out with the lowest numbered grit first, to sand your appliance as it will take off the most paint and rust. This certainly was intense to do, and not that the camera shows it, the old paint and rust was just flying everywhere, but it looks really cool on camera. Make sure to run the sander at the same speed and tempo everywhere. Don't let the device sit in one spot too much or press more firmly in one area or another. Make sure it's uniform. Don't press too firm because if you do, you're going to get deeper cuts in some areas than others, and it will show specific scratches or marring marks. The sander is heavy enough to make sure that there's weight to press down on the refrigerator door. Even after this first pass, you can see that a huge amount of rust has been removed from the door already. To the touch, it's quite smooth and this pass worked wonders, but there's still quite a bit of rust left on the door and there are still spots that are a little bit uneven. So now we wanna go ahead and switch grit to a higher number. In this case, I'm going to use a 150 grit disc. On the second pass, more rust starts coming off, and I do want you to notice one mistake that we made earlier in the first pass. During the first pass, I mistakenly dropped the sander on the door a little bit more intensely than other passes. It marked this area up here more heavily, and it illustrates how fast a good moving sander can remove the paint. Fortunately though, as we use these higher grits, it's gonna smooth out. Each pass that I'm doing here is sped up, but it takes about four to five minutes of real time. 
on the second pass of the 150 grit sandpaper, it's doing a good job removing more and more of the rust. Some of the bare metal is showing through, but once we paint, it's not going to matter as the sander is doing the work to smooth the door out, which is what we want, not take all the paint off. Remember, the same speed, don't press down too hard, keep moving, keep the same tempo. Now we are done with the second pass. It feels far smoother than it did on the first pass, and it looks even better with more of the rust removed. However, you, as you can see close up, there's still quite a bit of rust marking on this door, and we will address that soon. For the final pass, I'm going to use 220 grit sandpaper. You could go a little bit higher than 220 if you like, but this was the kind that I had available on hand. If you want to use the exact tool that I used in this video, make sure to check the description in the product tags. I will either have this exact one or one very similar to what I used, uh, but preferably with the dust catcher. At the end of the third pass, I'm up to about 14 to 15 minutes of total work, including the edges and the sides of the door. But all this sanding does create a huge problem at the end of our third pass. There is a massive cloud of dust in my studio room, and a lot of it is on the store, which if we try to paint now would just ruin everything. In hindsight, I probably should have run a box fan with a HEPA filter or some other filtration device to cut down on the dust due to the lack of dust catcher, but even if I did that, there still would be probably quite a bit of dust to clean on the door from the sanding. To clean the door off before you begin any sort of painting, you don't want to use soap or water. Some sites could suggest acetone, which can work, but it has horrible fumes and it would eat away at the plastic and rubber on the other side, so I did opt for mineral spirits. You can just pour it onto the rags or paper towels and then wipe the surface off. As you can see, the door is literally changing color shades, which is really neat to watch on camera at this point. The door is literally now shining after the cleaning. It could be a little bit hard to see on camera, but the reflection's really nice and it's just really smooth after this third pass with the 220 grit sandpaper. One thing to note is that you generally want to paint shortly after cleaning. If you have more dust in the air or other objects could float and land on the clean door and you want to avoid if at all possible, so start your coat shortly afterwards. To prepare for painting, I'm gonna go ahead and tape the door off real quick with some masking tape. I decided to put the door on the floor to get kind of a better camera angle for you, but in hindsight, I really should have just left on the saw horses and put the tarp underneath. It would have made this go a little bit better, and I'll explain that in a bit. But before we paint, you can see that there are clearly still rust spots despite the mirror finish and the three passes of the sandpaper, and this can be expected. If I just apply paint right now at this time with the appliance epoxy paint, the rust has a very large chance of coming through the paint, and we've seen this happen on many other pieces we've done in the past. So what you want to use first is something called a rust inhibitor. This will change the properties of the rust to allow you to paint over it without any issues and it acts as a primer which helps the painting process. I'm using Rust-Oleum Rust Primer. Make sure to read the instructions. I and my staff have been using Rust-Oleum to repaint appliances for years and one key thing of course to start is to shake the can for at least one minute, maybe even two. The time could vary from can to can. Read the instructions. When using spray paint, you always want to start away from the piece and then spray through the piece, then stop spraying once you've crossed the entire piece and are at the edges where your tarp or cloth would be. The reason for this is you don't want to build up paint when you start spraying, then move the nozzle. So start, move through the piece, all the way to the end, past it, stop, then start again on your next pass. After a few passes, you're going to get the hang of when to start and when to stop though. But at any rate, let's go back to this door. I went and slowly sprayed the top and sides of the unit, and this rust primer covered up everything really well on the first pass, I think. I should have just done one coat, but I decided to do two for the camera. But the one thing I want to focus on here is re-coating times. On the rust primer, you need to either do the second coat around 30 minutes to an hour or over 48 hours, but not in between, and this is very important for you to note. At any rate, I did the second coat about 40 minutes in, the other concern that you're going to have when doing painting like this is ventilation. Paint contains a volatile organic compounds or VOCs. They're toxic in large quantities, so make sure you have good ventilation and a mask on when doing this. Now it's time after the second coat of the rust primer to paint the door, and this is where the video starts taking a few problematic terms. Up to this point, the coats have gone flawlessly as well as a sanding, but as I apply the first coat of paint here with the white appliance epoxy paint, you can see these horrible dots or splotches are starting on the first coat. And at this point, I'm about ready to throw the spray can at a wall and end the video, even though we just got to painting. 
but I figure I've sunk a lot of time into this video by this point, so maybe you can learn from some of the problems we had, which are only starting now. The first coat otherwise goes okay, but you can clearly see these dots, I think, on the camera. Depending on your technique and the spray you use, sometimes you can use a little bit of paint thinner to spread these out, but my hope was that using the appliance epoxy paint, that it would spread out between the first and second coats. But going to the second coat, my hopes were uh, unfounded. About 30 minutes after the first coat, I'm going to start the second coat and I'm just going to roll with it. At this point, I'm just going to see if the second coat can cover over these paint splotches. And of course, with my luck, the can is still spraying some dots on the door, making a bad situation worse. It's covering up the old dots, but it's now creating new ones. Great. However, with the second coat finally on, the camera may not easily show how the splotches are still there. I assure you that they are still there and it's kind of bad to the eye, but you can see that we have managed to cover them up a little bit. Now, why this happened, I think one of the mistakes I made here was having the door on the floor. The reason that this is a problem is it causes me to bend over the door too much, preventing me at times from spraying the door evenly above the piece. This could cause some problems. Generally, you want to have your spray can about 10 inches above the object you're spraying at all times. I noticed towards the end of the second coat, I was kind of arcing the nozzle a little bit on the door instead of running at the same level because I had to bend over the piece. So what I'm going to do after the second coat dries a little bit is to move the door back onto the saw horses, then put the tarp under the door, but not underneath the saw horses. Why? I don't know. It's just something I did. I don't think it caused any issues. Hindsight being 2020, I should have just put it on the floor. Now, one reason that I could have had the spray can blobs build up is that I used my finger to depress the spray can nozzle. At times, your finger can either obstruct the nozzle or depress the nozzle at an angle, causing the jet spray to blob and build up. So with this in mind, what I'm going to do is go out and buy a spray can gun to help out with this. Additionally, the other thing could be that the spray can is just simply defective. I had nearly used the entire can by the second coat, so I'm just going to buy another can and start from the beginning. Again, we didn't have these problems with the rust primer, so again, I'm leaning towards the can being defective, and there are possible other problems that you could have had, like the arcing you may want to watch out for when applying paint properly. Again, I'm using Rust-Oleum Appliance Epoxy Paint, and it's worked generally well. If you have to use a second can, absolutely do not mix can types because it would create a huge problem. Now it's time to put our third and final coat on. Putting the door on the saw horses, I think, was a better idea. It has worked out to give me a much more even and level spray. Additionally, using the paint gun now, there are no blobs or splatters on this third coat. It's having the added bonus of also covering up all the blotches that discolor the door due to the heavier volume of spray. So this coat looks great, and I think we're almost done. Well, almost. So we're two coats into this, and I gotta say I'm pretty disappointed. But before you call me Brandon Stark, because this is looking like a s episode of Game of Thrones Season 8, there are a few things that I think I could do differently on this that could solve some of the issues we have with the spotting on the paint and then some of the other issues. So let's go over those things and let's attempt to salvage this and turn it into House of the Dragon or something like that. So let's go. Now after showing the giant mess that we've created, I'm going to run the 220 grit sandpaper over the door again. Let's talk about why this could have happened with the spidering while I try to run this sander. I've seen this problem happen with other people that have used appliance epoxy paint, and I don't know if anyone's ever really addressed the problem. So why did the cracking, the spider webs, or the crazing appear? Well, there could be a few different reasons for this potentially. One possible issue is that I had five coats of paint on, without sanding in between, which could be just too much paint for this piece. Sometimes you'll hear professionals tell you to sand in between coats, and this could be one reason why. With too much paint on the door, as it dries up, it could suck the paint up into these small peaks and valleys. The other issue, which I think is more likely with my particular piece, is regarding the directions that we talked about much earlier in the video. Remember how I mentioned the rust primer said to do a second coat in either 30 minutes or two days? Well, guess what? The appliance epoxy paint is not the same, and I didn't realize that in between the primer and the paint. The directions say to coat either within one hour or you have to wait an entire week. In making this video, I did not realize this on the third coat. I did the third coat after about a day or two 
because of the breaks I had to take in between filming because I run an appliance business and I think this is what caused the issues. It pays well to read the instructions and follow them to the letter in how often you can coat your project piece. Now with the sanding almost done, I'm going to hand sand the area with the spider webbing just a little bit more because it's in rough shape. In hindsight, I should have just replaced the 220 with 150 for an additional pass of this to give it a more even look. It turned out okay, but I really should have reconsidered this. So I'm learning a lot here, and there's a reason that this channel is Ben's appliances and junk and not Ben's painting and junk, is I'm still learning a lot, especially on a piece this large. Everything looks almost perfect on this, except for a glaring problem right here with some spidering that we've had an issue with. And we also have, the, the camera can't see, are those white droplets that sprayed during the very beginning stages of the white coat. And in order to solve both of these problems is one and the same. We're going to take our high grit sandpaper on our rotary tool, and we're going to go ahead and do a light sanding on the top, then hit it with mineral spirits, and then apply one final coat of paint, and we should be ready to mount this back on the refrigerator, and we should be done. But let's see how that goes. But with the sanding done, I need to rewipe the mineral spirits on the door due to the amount of dust and paint that has come off the unit. I only had to use a small bit on the paper towels, which is very insignificant versus the size of the can. So if you have to work on a piece like this, you can purchase a much smaller bottle of spirits. Now it's time to hit the door with the final coat of paint, or at least I hope is the final coat. I'm going to hit it with a general light coat everywhere since I sanded everything with the 220. But once this first coat is done, I'm going to wait the required 45 minutes and then recoat the spider webbed area once with a light coat of paint after this first coat so it looks a little bit better. But between the final sanding and repainting, one thing I want to mention that you may not see on camera is that the blobs that were from that first and second coat are totally removed and the door does look way better. There's no more spidering on the door, nor did it come back after this coat of paint, and it's looking way better. From this point now, I'm going to wait four to six hours for the door to dry. I'm going to go ahead and take the door, remove the masking tape from the door gasket, and go ahead and reinstall the door on the refrigerator with the three screws up top. Again, your piece could be different. With the screws in the door, everything looks great except for one little thing. We managed to have some overspray on the inside of the door, on the door gaskets, and the plastic liner inside. The big problem with this is that I bought some paint stripper just in case there was some overspray, and I didn't really think about it because most paint stripper or acetone will work great on metal, but it will not work on rubber or plastic. It will actually melt rubber or plastic away. So you need to find something different to remove the paint on the plastic. And the best thing that you can use is rubbing alcohol. Here I am using 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can use lower concentrations, but as you can see here that the alcohol works amazing and it is totally wiping away the paint overspray with just a little bit of elbow grease. Of all the mistakes I made in the video, this was easily the best part of the video because it worked way better than I thought it would. It's taking a few paper towels, but all of the overspray is coming off at a rapid pace. It could work on the metal with a little bit more elbow grease, so do watch out to not remove the paint from the metal. I found that spraying the alcohol on the door and then wiping it isn't quite as effective as just heavily soaking your paper towel or rag, at least in my experience here. We now have a door that looks absolutely positively brand new, at least the paint part. The deep freeze is quite old, so it looks about as good as it can on the front, and I'm not going to bother repainting the top and sides because I just really wanted to work on the worst part, which was the front of the door, but we've given it a new lease on life. Well, that's it for the video, guys. I have spent a more time than I thought than I would on this piece. Had a few successes. It looks really good uh, compared to the one right beside it. Originally, they looked terrible side by side. This looks a lot better. It's not perfect, but the thing is, this channel is Ben's appliances and junk, not Ben's appliances and painting. I never have done a piece this complex or difficult before with appliance paint, and we had a few, again, failures here, but I think we learned from them, and it turned out really, really well. This looks really good on the outside. It's still going to be an older um, garage fridge, but I was able to use all of these techniques and learn from them so I can apply them to nicer things like my grandmother's refrigerator. 
Most pieces aren't going to be this difficult with rust when it comes to appliances, but again, I hope you learned some things. So I hope you have a great day. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content and eventually maybe another painting job that has less issues than this one did. Bye.